uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, the true meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam, and that, that uh, it, it could also be true meaning of, of the Bhagavat. See, see, so um, which means true knowledge, and that means Bhagavad Gita, that means uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and all that. So today we'll do, we'll discuss and fluff out the verses in Bhagavatam. Uh, first chapter, first canto, second chapter, 17 and 18. Let's see where that goes. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay? So this is Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, seventeen and eighteen. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, okay, cleanses desire for material. Okay, cleanses desire for material uh, enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, okay, uh, which are in themselves virtuous, virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Okay? Now let's go to the word for word in this one here. Uh, shri, uh, Srinavatam those who have developed the urge to hear the messages of Svakata, his own words, Krishna, Svakata, his own words. See, his own words. You know, it's interesting about his own words. You know how the Bible is said to be the inspired word of God? Inspired word of God? Uh, so, and, and that's been a bit controversial in Christianity because some people say, well, it's not, it's just written by man and all that. But actually, all scriptures is, spo is really spoken and written by God, okay? And how that shows up is, is, is sedantically, if the person is actually a pure devotee, means their heart is purified by ecstatic worship of bhakti, okay? So therefore, the Lord uses them as a vai medium. Isn't that what Prabhupada taught? The devotee that has actually realized Krishna is a vai medium. See? And the Lord, it's, it's, it's the Lord that speaks through them. So whose words are they? See? Just like, you know, uh, the body of a devotee or anybody can be, is considered like an instrument, a flute. See? Krishna has a flute. See? Whose breath is behind the flute? See, the flute is the devotee. It's serving Krishna. He's serving his breath. See, Krishna likes to play that flute. It's his devotee. See, the devotee likes to be played by Krishna. That's called pure devotional service. Good morning. Hey, see, pure devotional service. Thank you so much. Got a shot of honey? That's great. Awesome, man. Yeah. See, pure devotional service. Yeah, my, my nice friend here. <laughs> See? See, so the flute and Krishna's breath. See? So his own words. You see, even the Bible, even the book of John talks about this. In the beginning was the word. The word. See, the word from the beginning. The word was with God. See, the flute and the word, they're simultaneously one and different. See? The word was with God. That's intimate relationship between God and the devotee. In the beginning was the word. The word. Jesus was considered the incarnation of the word. See? Because he had the spirit of devotion. See? See? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was God. Is God. Always will be. You see? You see the Siddhanta here? It's so perfect in Prabhupada's books. It's really true that Krishna dictated these things. It's so perfect. His own words is Svakata. You've got to hear Svakata from a devotee who has realized Krishna. See? You've got to hear Harikata from a person that has realized Krishna. 
Now, to do that, you have to be truthful. See? Swagata, his own words, the personality of Godhead. See? Punya means virtues. Svana, hearing. Kirtana, chanting. Indra, Atta, and Sta, within one's heart. Certainly, Adranini, uh, desire to enjoy matter. Okay? Uh, Vidamuti, cleanses. See, benefactor. See, benefactor, Satam, of the truthful. See, of the truthful devotee. What is it? What is This is very significant. Truthful. See? Truthful is not what people think. Truthful doesn't mean that you know a lot of knowledge about the Shastras. Oh, yes, I know the absolute truth and all of that. See? But you might be a hypocrite and you just, you know, hypocrite means you're not really truthful. See? This is what I pointed out with this one sannyasi. He wears the clothes. See, to make my point, I, I use a living example. person wore these clothes of a holy person. A holy person, if he's really holy, is, is detached from the world and is really into God. And this so-called holy person with the clothes was running after me and wouldn't let me go to beg for money. Oh, you've got to give me some money. I need, I want this money, you know. You've got to do it, you know, like this. I said, what kind of holy person is that? <laughs> He's running after me. See? So the guy's not truthful. In his heart, he's a materialistic person. See? I'm not telling people this. There's one guy, because I mentioned that, he says, Oh, you see, you're trying to make yourself better than others. You're trying to be top dog. I said, Oh, yeah? No. Truth is top dog, man. If you know the truth... That'll liberate you from illusion. If you don't know the truth, you'll be following these kind of people, polished dogs, people like that, in a nice polished uniform. But inside, they're materialistic, just like a Putana. Putana was looking really good, really, but in her heart was materialistic, Was wanted to kill Bhakti, didn't like Bhakti. There's a lot of persons that are in Sanya's garb that are envious and jealous of Bhakti. They think that a real devotee is getting ahead of them in their heart. They're thinking like that. They don't know it. Okay. So people got to know this. Ah, thank you very much, Gurunga Das Aurora. I love comments. I love questions or comments. And, you know, put out your mind. Please do that. And that goes for everybody. This is a discussion. In this way, everything gets more and more clear for everybody. Okay. So, so basically, truthful means you know what's in your heart, man. And if it's not clean, you just admit it. See, that's called repentance. Repentance means you change your mind. If you think that the dirt in your heart is good, is clear, is clean, is honest, and it's not because it's the pollution, then you admit that. And then you become a candidate for hearing from a bona fide spiritual master. The Lord will lead you to them. And, he'll, and, and that kata you hear from the bona fide spiritual master will cleanse your heart. Otherwise, you're listening to people whose hearts, they're not qualified speakers. See? you gotta, you got to be... Oof, come on. Yeah. What's going on here? Man, what the heck? Just a second here. That's the problem, I think. Anyway, let's put it down here. See, you got to be purified in your heart. And that means a lot of it, uh, worship of the Lord with loving ecstasy for a long time. And that's what purifies the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a question, comment here. So a bona fide speaker on Srimad Bhagavatam. Well, to my knowledge, only direct descendants or disciples in the lineage of the Goswamis of Raghunath Bhat are bona fide speakers on as Bhagavat Swarup presents. Okay. Um, um, Bhagavat Swarup was presented by none other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself to Goswami Raghunath Bhat. Okay, very good question. Let's discuss this. Okay. To my knowledge, only direct descendants or disciples 
of the lineage of Goswami Raghunath Bhatt. Okay, now, see, Bhakti Siddhanta started what he called a Shiksha lineage because he noticed that the descendants may or may not show the symptoms of be realizing Krishna. You could be a descendant and not be, a, you know, really a descendant of real uh, Bhagavat knowledge. And because not the real knowledge comes from ecstatic worship. So Bhakti Siddhanta and all real Acharyas who realize God, they, they look by symptoms. See, so a person who has realized the Lord, their conclusions will be um, validated in the, li in the uh, vision of the revealed scriptures. See, in the bit. So it's not a seminal, uh, a seminal line like say, well, this person's grandfather was, you know, a disciple, a descendant of this and that, and, and that they don't exam examine the symptoms of the devotee. I mean, this is the Lord shows this. Prabhupada had, uh, had uh, sons and, and daughters, and, and he, they, some of them were not even favorable to what he was doing. They, so are they descendants because they were related to him? How about Advaita Chari even? You know, some of his, his sons, he had ten sons or something, they weren't even interested. They, some became Mayavadis. See, they're not, because they were related to him, they're not really descendants. You see, that's, that doesn't, that is not logical. That is not the way it is in reality, because even Advaita Chari he had other sons, but they're not all descendants. Some became Mayavadis. You know, in Advaita Pragash, you know, Advaita said, I have to leave this planet because my relatives are blaspheming Lord Chaitanya. Okay? And some of his relatives went against. So you see, that argument doesn't hold up. They have to be direct descendants. So what we need, and Bhakti Siddhanta made a Shiksha Parampara. Shiksha means, oh, Jagannath Das Babaji is in the real line. He has the symptoms of a, of a, real, uh, um, a real associate of Lord Chaitanya. He has ecstatic bhakti. Okay? He has proper conclusions and understand. And the same thing, Jagannath Das Babaji is there, and so is Gorkashur Das Babaji at proper understanding. So is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And matter of fact, Jagannath Das Babaji, he was a renounced person. Bhakti Vinod was a householder, but Jagannath, uh, but um, um, Gorkashur Das Babaji would go and listen to Bhagavatam class from Bhakti Vinod Thakur. See? Because he had the symptoms, even though he was a householder, he had the symptoms of realizing Krishna. He had devotional, ecstatic love. He had conclusive understanding. See? Otherwise, if you believe that, then you don't really believe in the mind of the real Acharyas. I'm telling you what their real mind is, and hopefully convince you, because here you see, you, you're seeing these are descendants, but maybe they're not. Maybe they don't have real bhakti. They don't have real devotion. Okay? So, you know, they could be in a devotional, fa in, a, in a family like that, or maybe not. You know? why, do, why, do, why does the uh, disciplic line sometimes have to be reestablished? Even in the lines, because people forget about real bhakti and, and, and they don't have conclusive understanding and start preaching speculation or preaching about... Um, that a, a line is seminal and don't, you know, if the person is just born into the family, then they're qualified. See? No. It's symptoms. It's by symptoms. See? So you got to see, does this person have the ecstatic symptoms of bhakti that are talked about in the, in the real scriptures like Prabhupada's books? Does this person have conclusive knowledge in the vision of the revealed scriptures like the book says? To those who get the real mercy of Lord Chaitanya, they can teach about Krishna and about the philosophy in the vision of the revealed scriptures. Okay? That's, that's the symptoms you have to look at, otherwise you're going to be, make, be misled.
I think I'm going to move over a little bit. i got to move. This is going to be really noisy here. So uh, we're going to move over to another section here. Yesterday. Okay, so I'll be right back here. I'm just moving my stuff over. Lighting too here. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, let's go to the um, the next verse here. Bhagavad Gita 18. The, uh, probably lost that guy because it doesn't agree with their uh, um, with their understanding see so um, if you don't hear from a person that is presenting something logical and clear that's what should be accepted is something that makes more sense that's off of the bodily platform if I say if I'm teaching that that oh yeah well you know if you're born in a Goswami family then you're automatically a, a bona fide guru because they're in the line. See, that, that is so external. That means, and then you hear somebody say, well, no, I mean, do they have the symptoms and all that, and you don't accept it? That's called less intelligent. See? And they won't like this message. So, that's just how it is. I mean, that's... This is a whole other level of consciousness, and that's why, you know, Johan was talking this morning, a whole class, why don't they accept what we're talking about it's so logical and so clear and everything and they just base their their understanding of well our our authorities say don't listen and they don't tell us why we don't know why but we just obey blindly see that's that's the level of blind adherence to the rules and regulations without even knowing why see well the authorities say don't listen to Gorhari man See, because if you do, see, it's not even logical, because if you come here and listen, like Johan, 
The result of that is ecstatic love, ecstatic bhakti. See? They did the same number with Jesus, the same thing. Don't let the, the Pharisee type, see, the ISKCONs of uh, 2,000 years ago, the re, uh, organized religion said, don't go listen to Jesus. But whoever did got the Holy Spirit. If they believed in Jesus with their heart and they listened, they got cleansed and purified, the Holy Spirit awoke in them, and then they worshiped God with great, tremendous, ecstatic ecstasy and power and all that stuff spiritual power. Okay? Move them to a whole nother level by listening to a bona fide speaker. This is what Bhagavatam's talking about. Okay? But if you blindly believe, oh, well, you know, I was taught by my teacher that you got to be in the line. Oh, what about symptoms? We don't think about that. Just, you got to have the semen, man. The, you know, are you in the seminal line? You know, uh, that's all we know. And then automatically we accept him as guru. Eh? This, like you know, this is these are the kinds of less intelligent arguments that people have that have gurus like this. They they less intelligent arguments, and they cannot understand this. Eh? You know, we had one guy on the thread. He said, "Well, um, actually, if a person is guru, of course they're uttamadikari. See, eh? this is what they're taught." Well, you know, you see, this person's been appointed by our committee. Of course he's Uta Madikari. See, that's the idea. They believe teachers like that, therefore they stay less intelligent and on the materialistic platform of Vaishnavism. See? If you want to, if you're really truthful and, and ready, then you'll hear the Lord will lead you, lead you to a qualified speaker. See? that actually worships him with loving ecstasy and has been cleansed out because of that, clear, and then you will become clear listening to them. See? Cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the person who has developed a, des a desire um, to hear from them. Material, and that's not exactly it, because, hey man, de desire for material enjoyment... We got a body, man. The body has needs and desires. If it didn't, it'd be dead. This is this renunciation stuff thing. It's not about that, man. It's about, you don't, you don't have faith in this world. You don't have faith that being even a renounced sannyasi is going to deliver you. You know, my renunciation of all these things is going to deliver me. No, that ain't going to deliver. What's going to deliver you is have the urge to hear these topics, to hear about truth, to become, to become more clear to the point of ecstatic devotion awakens. That's what's going to save you. To have the urge to hear from a speaker who has the natural urge to speak about Krishna. Okay? Because they love Krishna. They love these books. They see these are God's words. They love to glorify the truth. Okay? Let's look at the word for word here for a second here. Oops. Yeah, oh, it's better uh, to enjoy matter. See, this in the word for word is uh, Andre. No, let's look at what this is to enjoy matter and the different explanations. Because otherwise, I don't want people to follow the path of renouncing first. See? 
It's not about that. It's about developing the urge, and then you don't want to, like, it's like you realize that family life and everything, you may need to do it, the body may need to have a family, because, God, you know, we're, we've got these innate, uh, um, uh, we have a body, man. Body is attracted to different things, and that's okay. You know? And, and, but you can still have the urge to hear from devotees, and that's the main thing, because Krishna will give you connection. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> mm. uh. Okay, next verse. So, verse 18. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart. See, regular attendance in classes on Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee. You see, that's synonymous. You, the pure devotee, their heart is purified by bhakti by ecstasy, loving, ecstatic worship. See? And you're getting the classes which are the right understanding. See? Loving X, Bhagavad Gita 1010. You're getting the right understanding from those regular classes. They're telling you what they're realizing about the scriptures. See? Because of their ecstatic worship. You see? That's the bona fide speaker. Who's the bona fide speaker? The one who worships the Lord in loving ecstasy. Because you'll get the right classes. Bhagavatam means Bhagavat. Knowledge. Transcendental knowledge. Clear knowledge. Okay? Only those who worship me with loving ecstasy have that clear knowledge. So why would you go and listen to anybody else? Why? I'll tell you why you would do that. Because you have a, a teacher who says, Oh, hey man, anybody that's a guru is obviously Uttamadikari. See, a teacher tells you that and you believe it. Therefore, you can't, and therefore, I come here, I say something that is more logical and more clear, and right along in the vision of the revealed scriptures, you don't accept it, because your teacher, you believe more in them than here. But whoever is convinced to hear here is going to have the results of persons like Johan, Rangaleka, see, all these other devotees that are in our Sangha, progressiveness very quickly coming to the path of the awakening of loving ecstasy. And also we become clearer and clearer and clearer about these verses. Okay. So even like within our Sangha, I had one person say, you know, well, you know, this person in our sangha told me this and told me this, and I'm very, I'm still, I'm unhappy, I'm unhappy. I said, well, who's your teacher? Are they really your teacher? I mean, they can help you. People in our sangha can help you. But hey, man, the person who will help you more is the clearest one. That means the one who's worshipped the Lord with loving ecstasy for more years or more time. Because the more you do that, the more clear you get, the more free of the obstacles you get. See? So don't be unhappy if one of my students, because I hear this, and that's why I'm telling you guys, don't have so much faith in what they say, like it's good as God, because maybe they even some ecstasy. Hey, your guru here has been worshiping the Lord and loving ecstasy in this life for over 35, 40 years. And my students, they're just awaking the bhakti. So don't put them on the same platform as your guru, especially when you're getting unhappy listening to them or some things they say. The reason is you put equal faith. See, that's like you're not making the right distinction. You have to say, well, I can't have so much faith in my god brother here. He's just awakening up, man. Let me have faith in Gorhari. Let me go ask him. See? And you'll see, you'll get a different result. You'll be more pleased with that, usually. Some of my students may have a little false ego thinking, oh, I'm a great teacher now too. And you see, but still they don't teach like, like their guru can teach. 
Okay. So, let that be the ultimate, you know, authority. Just put your, your, you know, if you have any real deep questions, if you're unhappy with what your God brother says, come to Gaur Haridas here if you consider him your guru, okay? Otherwise, you might be a little unhappy about the result. So, you know, you just got to be common sense, okay? And now you know the real standards here. It happened also with Prabhupada. The, the God brothers, you know, uh, their God brothers sometimes be unhappy with what people thought, you know, different le levels of consciousness. And and so Prabhupada would give the final, you know, decision because he's worshipping the Lord in ecstatic devotion. For a long time. A lot of... them, most of them, almost all of them didn't have any of that level of they were just doing Vaidhi Bhakti stuff so so let's go to the word for word here Nasta destroyed Prayashu almost to nil. Abastreshu all that is inauspicious. See? So by regular classes hearing the devotee, it destroys almost to nil all that is inauspicious. See? And you know what's inauspicious? See, when you start hearing from a person that worshipping the Lord beyond material duality, you find out what's inauspicious is not just negative or, or mode of ignorance stuff. It's also inauspicious could be mode of goodness. Okay? If you're attached to being a goody two-shoes or something or the uh, auspicious, uh, material auspicious path, that might be aus inauspicious here. Okay? If there, there are principles in Vaidhi Bhakti that are inauspicious when faced with this path. If a person says, oh, I'm sorry, I can't go listen to Gaur Haridas today because i got to worship my deity. Oh, that is totally inauspicious according to these principles. See? And I can prove my points. People might say, oh, that is total bullshit and all that stuff. Oh, really? Advaita Acharya was worshipping the deity, doing deity worship. And a devotee who worshipped the Lord with loving ecstasy came into his courtyard, right in the middle of the flame going up there. He takes it and puts it down and immediately leaves the deity and goes and associates with the pure devotee. See, these are the principles of Raghunuga Bhakti. Otherwise, you'll miss... Because if you have more faith in Vaidhi Bhakti principles, you'll miss the opportunity to serve a living devotee or to associate with a living devotee. Because, well, I have more faith in Vaidhi principles and that devotee comes into your courtyard and then leaves and you miss the opportunity. See? So there's one principle. Oh, how about another principle? See, that was something that's considered auspicious by the Vaidhi Bhaktas. And uh, Raghunuga Bhakti said, Oh, that's very unauspicious to continue your deity worship when there's a pure devotee you can listen to. Let's take Jesus' example. Person says, Oh, Jesus, I'll follow you. But let me go bury my father first. I need to follow that rule and regulation in the Vedas or in their Bible that when your father dies, you must bury them and give them a nice send-off and all that stuff. And Jesus said, oh, that's very inauspicious. You know, those who, those who uh, put their hand to the plow and look back are not worthy of the kingdom. You see, he taught it. Raganuga Bhakti back then, principle. Then he said another, you know, another to another person, same thing, same principle. Oh, uh, you want to bury your father? Oh, no. He says, you found life. 
here. Let the dead bury the dead. Go let your family and every they have more faith in all that. The guy is dead, man. He's he's gone from that body. Yeah. What do you care? You found life. And back then, if you missed Jesus, he'd be in another town, man. Where'd you go? Okay, well, I was burying my father and then Jesus left. I don't know where he went. See? Inauspicious. Even though it seemed like a positive thing to do, according to the Dharma of the Shastras. See, where are you going to learn this? See? By a Raganuga Bhakti teacher. See? No Vaidhi Bhakti teacher would teach you this. Prabhupada didn't teach this either. More uh, Sometimes he would. He put it in his books. Left it for us to teach. How about Ramananda Roy? You go into the Holy Dham, the Shastras all say, Oh, you shouldn't go anywhere. When you go in the Holy Dham, you could go to the barber, shave up, and then go to Lord Jagannath. Don't take any prasadam and everything. Anything. So the Lord was sitting back in his place, delivering prasadam to his devotees. Ramananda Roy enters, and also the other devotees, they enter. And they don't go to Lord Jagannath. They don't shave their head. They go right to Lord Chaitanya. Okay. And then the Lord said, Why didn't you go to Jagannath first? Don't you know that's the rule? He says, Well, the heart is like a chariot. And the feet have to obey. My heart brought me here. What can I do? <laughs> See, he knew. And pleased the Lord. A million times more. So by regular attendance, okay, all that is inauspicious. Nicham, regularly, see, regularly. See, this is not even put in the verse, regularly, and that is so important. See? Oh yeah, regular, by regular attendance. Yes, it is in the verse. Yeah. See, regularly, that means you come... If you can, a couple times a day. Okay? If you're hearing, if you're lucky to hear from a person who's realized Krishna, very rare. You come a couple of times a day, man. Just like Johan, look at him. He, he's coming three or four times a day. He was eager to hear. Look at the result of that. Look at that devotion awakening in that guy. The realizations and all that. See? Okay? Should be inspiring to people. See? Okay? I mean, you don't have to come that much, but hey, man, that shows you. He, he just had this eagerness. Yeah. So if you're not coming regularly, if you do, do you want to be like Johan? Or like River? Or like Mina? Or like anybody in this sangha? A lot of people in this sangha, Rangaleka? Well, you got to come at least regularly. Otherwise... The result will be longer. Oh, maybe you come, like some people come once a week or once a month. I have people coming here. They still don't get it, so I'll keep repeating it. If you want the result of being like Johan and these others, well, you come regularly. But if you come once a week or something, well, you're just delaying things. You might die, and then you die without real devotion awakened or all these misconceptions you're carrying. Because if you really were there, if you were really so advanced or all of this you'd be coming more than regularly but people really aren't see people really aren't eh? and therefore they don't come regularly I had one guy I won't name any names he said oh, I, I've got the same bhakti as Gorhari yeah it's the same yeah I cry and you know <laughs> you know and all this stuff he comes maybe once every six months and then I look on his his Facebook page and what do I see politics this politics oh Trump this Trump that oh blah, blah, blah. his whole thing is and he's got the same bhakti as me you know and but he doesn't appreciate he doesn't come and hear Harikata I mean I come to hear Harikata even though I may be speaking it but I like to hear it from my students also yeah 
because that's how bhakti is. You want more of it, and you want more, and you more forever. Okay? A lot of people think they're more advanced than they are, and they don't show it. You've got to show it by your example. If you're so advanced in bhakti, why aren't you coming here regularly? You know? I know people, they, they say, oh, I'm an ecstatic devotee and all that, but I don't like Gohari's Kata, you know, because they don't want that anarta, those anartas, that Putana crapola purified. They want to keep that all in the name of ecstatic devotee. But that's a, the offense is, oh, I'm not attracted. Yeah, you're not. That anarta is not attracted. Putana is not attracted. Oh, leave me. See? They leave. And I got some fools who go follow after that. See? So, all that is inauspicious. Nicham, regularly, regularly, regularly. Bhagavata. Srimad Bhagavatam includes all Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavat. Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, if you're lucky to hear it from somebody that knows it. You see? And what's that? It's interesting, it says, uh, by regularly hearing Bhagavata from Srimad Bhagavatam, or, it says in the word for word, or the pure devotee. Seva, by serving, see, by serving the Bhagavatam or the pure devotee. All, um, all, see, so Prabhupada knew not everybody is going to be able to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from a pure devotee. See? So, or, see, but isn't it better to hear from a person who worships the Lord in ecstatic love? See? It just it just quickens the process. Because a lot of people that I'm see reading Bhagavatam, they're not developing ecstatic love of God like Johan and these others. Because they're hearing from a living devotee. It wasn't strong enough for them. Or or Janaki or Rangaleka or River to develop these these uh, this bhakti just from the Bhagavat Hear it with, like hearing it from your own mind or hearing it from those who haven't realized it but look this is proof that there's some realization here because they're developing bhakti so fast pure bhakti love real love conclusive understanding so quick See? By serving unto the personality of Godhead. So, Uttam, transcendental. See? Uttam means the ultimate. See? Uttam. Like Uttam Adhikari, the highest level. Uttam, transcendental, and Uttam is the same. See? that The transcendental loving service is Uttam. The highest platform of the world. See? The Lord is giving that very quickly to people. You hear from a bona fide speaker and you do some service, and that service is hearing also. If you can do some more, that's great too. Better. Practical service. And, see? So all that's in the way of this transcendental loving service is destroyed. See, that's all these misconceptions. You know, the idea that Vaidhi Bhakti is better than coming here. The Vaidhi Bhakti and Vaidhi Bhaktas and Vaidhi Bhakti Gurus is better than serving a, a devotee and hearing from a devotee who has ecstatic loving worship of the Lord, is engaged in that. See, that's a misconception. See, coming here, you're cleansed of that. A lot of people, they can't come here because they're not cleansed of that misconception that their Vaidhi Bhakti gurus and their Vaidhi Bhakti principles are in the way of coming here. 
See? Because if you come here, you're going to get results like Johan, like these others here. Engagement in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, like you're like their guru. See? That's why people are not engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, because their guru isn't yet. Or their guru may be like Prabhupada, but isn't teaching these principles that I'm teaching now. Because they're not ready. They are not re weren't ready to accept them. Just like, look how many people, I'm a Prabhupada disciple, and they unfriend me on Facebook. So many Prabhupada disciples. See? They're still not ready to hear this message. That's why Prabhupada hid it from them and is still hiding it from them because they're not even interested. Hey, that's why Prabhupada and Bhakti, they hid it, because if they showed it, they're not interested. They go away. No, just give us hard rules and regulations to follow. You know? You know why it works with Jesus? I was thinking about this today. It's a very simple... I just realized, I was listening to this song... You know, and it's not completely conclusive, but the whole preaching mission of Jesus was his thing was to get people to accept him. Accept the message, accept the conclusions. Because those who do, you get the benefit of associating with a pure devotee. People don't get the benefit so much because they don't really accept the devotee and their teachings. Okay? So therefore they accept people who haven't realized God's teachings. They accept people in the, in the uh, New Age who haven't realized this level. See? They accept in, in Vaishnavism or even in, in the Bible, in Christianity, they accept ministers as authorities who haven't realized the Holy Spirit, realized God because of the Holy Spirit. Same problem. But if you accept a conclusive devotee, my whole preaching here is to get people to accept this message here. Because if you do, you'll become like Johan. You want to become an ecstatic devotee and cry when you read Chaitanya Charitamrita? You come here and accept the message. If not, well, too bad. I guess you don't want Krishna enough because that's Krishna, man. Krishna is relishing what Lord Chaitanya relished. Wasn't Krishna or Lord Chaitanya considered the Supreme Lord? Weren't the devotees considered real devotees because they would cry when they chanted Hare Krishna? Or the Lord would cry when he chanted Hare Krishna? Or Johan cries when he chants Hare Krishna? Well, you don't want that? Well, you don't want Krishna yet enough, I guess, huh? Otherwise, you would listen to devotees who cry for Krishna and laugh like madmen and are conclusive about it and they explain things as they are. Because the result is like that. My students, they come very quickly and start to relish the mellows of devotion. See? By the action of the book Bhagavat and the devotee Bhagavat absorbed in the mellows of devotion. See? The knowledge they give you, the mellows of devotion are instilled in your heart. Everybody should have full confidence in that. Why? Because the book teaches that, and I'm just telling you what's in the book. And I think you can see that that phenomena is here, that Gora Haridas day after day shows you that he's not just making it up, that he's, you know, chanting in ecstasy and all that stuff. I mean, you know... <laughs> That that's really here because look, it's even manifesting in those who believe it. You think I want you guys to accept me because I want to be on a, a big top dog, supreme ego trip? No, I want you to accept these conclusions so you can be like me, really ecstatic really blissful and so you can be like my disciples who accept it also like Johan like Rangaleka you want experiences like that 
Well, that's the whole reason I'm just trying to convince people that this is really authoritative, and the other stuff that doesn't produce this result is not authoritative. See, logically, presented logically, see, with good arguments that make sense. This other stuff doesn't make sense, man. To consider, well, he says the committee appointed them guru, I guess they're all Uttamadikari. That doesn't make any logical sense. It is not symptoms. You should be looking here at this speaker and say, well, he doesn't have a dhoti, doesn't have neck beads, see? But what's coming outside of him? Now, let me look out the outside. It's kind of looking, you know, when you look at a woman, okay? I was wondering how to use this one today. I was thinking about this. When you look at a woman or a man, beautiful man or beautiful woman, what do you see outside, right? That's attractive. Never think about what's inside. What's inside is in man, a beautiful man or woman is pus, stool, garbage, you know, funny looking entrails and all that stuff. Is that really attractive? You like to see a person opened up? I hate it, man. They, oh, when I, if I see on TV they're open, doing operate, I don't even want to look at that. Ugh. You know, thank God for doctors. They like to look at that stuff. I don't want to look at it, man. See? So that's the same thing. When you come here, what are you looking at, man? Outside, generally, external devotees are looking outside. Look at that guy. What, you're in Acharya? Dressed like that? Well, what's going on the inside? What are you hearing? See? Are you hearing acharya level material? See? Are you hearing things in, in, in alignment with the true vision of the revealed scriptures? Have you studied them enough to see that or not? See? So if you start, if you're led to look inside through the ears, and then you examine the scriptures, it's all there. See? And you become convinced by that. See? Then you transcend external bhakti. Because that's what everybody's looking at. Well, this person has a committee stamp. Well, he's wearing a nice pressed dhoti. Well, he's memorized a bunch of verses. See? And that's it. No deeper than that. See? That's called external devotion service. If you want to stay there, great. You know, you'll die in external, like, oh well, I'm a Prabhupada disciple, man. What does that mean? Well, I was initiated by Prabhupada. I had the banana in the fire and everything. I was initiated. You weren't. You're just a grand disciple, man. What kind of prestige is that in being a grand disciple? Well, you know what? The grand disciples, like Janaki, you know, the grand disciples are getting more than the Prabhupada disciples. See? Because it's not about... It. Those Prabhupada disciples will get into the kingdom of God after Janaki gets in, and she's a grand disciple. Now, isn't that encouraging? Because that's the truth. Why? Because she's coming here and listening, and they're not. They're still caught up in the external bhakti. Well, I was initiated from Prabhupada, therefore... I'm more advanced than Gohari or anybody else that wasn't initiated. That is external bhakti, isn't it? Is that even logical? See, if you look at symptoms, you say, well, does this Prabhupada disciple speak like Gohari Das or even like one of his disciples? None of them. If you're just caught up in that, you see, you stay like that. External. See, so coming here, see, so you got to get all these misconceptions destroyed from hearing a real guru, see, all that's troublesome to the heart. That's very troublesome to hear from people who haven't realized the Lord, and you think they do. That's, it causes nothing but trouble for them and for you. They heap on a bunch of karma by being in their false ego like Daksha, 
He thought she thought, I'm a great devotee. I'm so like this. See, trouble for him. Trouble for those who listen to them, him, because they also get the envy. They inherit the offenses of those here. See? Troublesome. How do you get rid of all those troubles? You feel discontent. How do you get rid of that? You hear from a real devotee like Shiva. See? Or their representatives. See? In the line. The line of Shiva, in the line of Advaita, line of Lord Chaitanya. Or Nichananda. See? Takes all these troubles out because you see the real scoop, man. You get the real understanding, the right understanding that they get from their worship, ecstatic worship. Okay? So that takes all these troubles of speculation and anartas and crazy ideas out of your head. Okay? Then what happens? Ah, then when it's almost completely destroyed and the service of the Personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. You see how fast Johan got it from just really being sincere and listening and listening and listening? It's an irre irrevocable fact in him. See? That's why I mention these guys. I've got examples of the book now. They're examples of being in line, man. They come and follow the procedure and the uh, advice of Bhagavatam. And therefore, because the speaker is qualified, they get the, the act maximum result, the ultimate result. See? If you've been going to Bhagavatam class for 40 years from a guru that's supposed to be on the highest level and you don't have what Johan has, well, you're listening in the wrong place. Because Johan was listening there and didn't get this result that he's getting here in less than a year. If that doesn't convince you, you're really a dunce. You're really less intelligent. See? But if you do get that, if you realize, wow, you know, he's right, now you're becoming a truthful devotee, and now you can start to listen, and you'll get cleansed of all these things, and the, these crazy ideas and speculations out of you, and then the loving service will awaken, like it is in my students who come and listen here. You want to read these books in ecstasy? You want to chant the holy name in ecstasy? This is the path. It's always been the path. Always will be the path. We praising the path of prema, pure devotional service, which the, this is right there in Bhagavatam. Anybody who listens, you can actually check it. If you don't listen here, you, it means you're keeping your speculations and all that's troublesome and you're just going to keep the troubles. And you go and listen to those who are troubled. And they can't take your troubles away because ecstasy cannot awaken in you. So it just depends how long you want to wear the tight pair of shoes. Okay, we'll end here now. That's good enough for now. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, any, why don't I see any comments or questions here? Yeah. Yeah. Oops. 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 Oh. I accept, I accept, I'm so fortunate to be here. Not logical, but true. You can't hear if you think you know. Exactly. If you think you know, but the bottom line is you've got to be logical. Okay? Say, I come with the argument. I think I really know. Okay? Do you have ecstatic love like John, like Johan? Well, I guess you don't know. Because that's knowing. Knowing is ecstatic devotion. That's why the picture you see on this group here, ecstatic devotion, and people, I know people won't all like, most probably won't like to look at it. Why? Because they don't like the ultimate result of study of the Vedas. The ultimate result is to worship the Lord in ecstatic love. Okay? That is the ultimate happiness, is intimacy with God, which it means 
synonymous with worshiping the Lord with ecstatic love. See? So if you think you know, well, prove it. Prove, I mean, if you're, if you're a truthful devotee and you say, well, I think I know more than Gorhari. Well, are you ex as ecstatic? The ultimate goal, I say here, is to achieve the loving service of the Lord. Like it says here, with um, the loving service, you're completely, when all this crapola is destroyed, and loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact in your heart. Well, that's here. It's an irrevocable fact. It's there in Johan. It's there in Rangaleka. And maybe some others. So, is that error in you? Who think you know? If you know, well, do you have that? You have the symptoms of being established in the loving service of the Lord. See? See? Just common sense, isn't it? Logic. See? So if you say, no, I don't... Get me. See? You're not truthful. You're not even logical. You're not willing to listen yet. You want to be like an ostrich. You put your head in a hole and you think you're safe. See? Your whole big body is sit sticking out of the hole. <laughs> so this is Siddhanta, man. This is clear knowledge. Logical. So if you think you know, then you must have the ultimate result. Because it even says, the Bhagavatam says, only those who, were, who whose heart have a pure heart can understand Srimad Bhagavatam from loving ecstatic worship. Only those who worship me with loving ecstasy have the right understanding. So are you like that? Can you stand up and say, yeah, I'm a pure devotee, man. My heart is purified by pure love of God. Okay. If you can't stand up, then you don't really know. I don't, I don't have to say, yeah, I'm that devotee. I just preach about the truth and you can evaluate, well, does, does it look like Gaur Haridas is engaged in the loving service of the Lord day after day after day? Is he able to transmit this loving service and purify disciples to where they enter into that stage of loving service? Obviously, yes. See, therefore, yeah. to still think you know in spite of these teachings here and telling you logically this, that means you're not a truthful devotee yet. Therefore, you can't get your heart cleansed because you're lying to yourself. And people are lying to you. You believe they're your authorities. No. The authority is that person who worships the Lord in loving ecstasy.